Australian literature on the topic, Lindsay Vickery uh, puts here an emphasis on continuous parametrical changes, which gains in um, which gain in clarity with dynamic notation. Equally, synchronization with the tape, live processing, video, lighting, etc., is often simplified with a scrolling score, for instance. Nonlinear formal organization, open works, and the like is also made easier with screen schools. Cat Hope, citing Winkler, sees animated notation as a third way between improvisation and fixed scores. The compromisation continuum uh, between traditional notation and free improvisation. To prom compromisation to cite a word by um, uh, Sandy Bagrat. Since the study narrows down to browser-based solutions, it recalls a few key concepts of communication protocols, as well as of the JavaScript ecosystem, typically addressed to composers with little background in web development. First, briefly describing what is WebSocket and um, how it differs from HTTP. So one, one simple difference is that uh, the first is unidirectional and the second bidirectional. <clears throat> also touching on the difference between TCP for HTTP and UDP for WebSocket OSC. OSC, famous content format developed at SendMat by Adrian Fried and Matt Wright. OSC development at SendMat later led to ODOT, which allows to label data with human readable text, associated arrays, or key value pairs. These definitions help us understand how, for instance, uh, in DrawSocket, OSC or ODOT bundles can be sent via WebSockets in the JSON format. Um, I then give a recap of JavaScript related technologies, JavaScript being one of the core technologies of the web. JSON, JavaScript object notation, is its most ubiquitous data exchange format. Pretty much the same thing as a Python di dictionary. Node.js allows to run server-side JavaScript. It owes its success to its module exchange platform, Node Package Manager, NPM. The 2018 Max release uh, features a new JavaScript support with Node for Max. Um, Node is low level, which is why, for instance, DrawSocket uses uh, Express as a framework to deal with most common server features. WebAssembly, Wasm, this is a new type of code that can run in a modern web browser. This is most relevant for in-score web and Faust. You see the picture, this is, um, well, pressing the source tab in, in, in an in-score page. Distributing music scores to mobile platform and the internet, an idea expressed by Dominic Fauber in 2015, enjoys a growing interest today as ex exemplified by two major framework, frameworks, in-score and DrawSocket as well as multiple independent initiatives by individual composers, developers. Vital, a and John, Smartbox, and Autoconductor, which I will briefly describe. InScore is an environment for the design of augmented interactive music scores, designed to be controlled in real time via OSC. All the graphic element of a score have a temporal dimension date, duration, and tempo, and can be manipulated both in the graphic and temporal domain. DrawSocket, in short, um, draws SVG and controls HTML content in real time. It's best described in the 2019 Proceedings papers. To trace its genealogy and give a bit of context, I will just cite uh, Gil Haidu's network music performance quintet.net. Um, this, um, this framework used is in 
is used in his opera back in 2002. Uh, let's cite also uh, his environment max score for max four originally. We can also cite uh, Rama Gottfried's symbolist as well as the recent developments of ODOT by John McCallum. Finally, the recent MUTO online course made me aware of the Senman Berkeley background of all these people. I'll now review uh, the more the independent initiatives, Justin Young's ProLounge into the Latin, Python is a node-based web application for choir. The layout is reminiscent of Guitar Hero. One of its uh, niceties is that it provides the singers with a button which they can use to get their pitch. Smartvox, my own score environment, developed at IRCAM by Benjamin Matuszewski and myself in uh, 2016. Smartvox distributes and synchronizes videos typically in uh, choral performances in which uh, the singer wear headphones in head-mounted displays. Vincent Goudard's John, the semiconductor, a tool for compromisation, is a distributed notation software designed to help collective free improvisation. Andreas Pirchner developed a real-time score system for composition Anna, Marie, Anna und Marie, by composer Marco Siciliani. And that was for the Norway Schengen Music Tag. Um, Super Collider sends OSC messages to dedicated school systems. He will present tomorrow, I think. A seventh framework, uh, which we saw this morning, perfect, perfectly fits in the autoconductor by Lothar Felton and Christian Klickenberg. I couldn't include it in the table, unfortunately, because the paper just came out this week. So comparing all these frameworks reveal a few similarities in design. Uh, most importantly, uh, the strong presence of Node.js and WebSockets, today well-known technologies for implementing real-time communication in the modern web. DrawSocket and Python both uh, use the TimeSync NPM library for synchronization. Smartbog uses the IRCAM library uh, uh, based on a similar concept of a shared clock. InScore natively supports Faust for sound processing and Guido, Guido for music notation, common music notation. For graphic rendering and animation, uh, it was hard for me to find um, convergence. I think they, they all use different libraries. Oh, no libraries. Um, before presenting the pieces of tonight's concert, I'd like to show some similarities in, in score and DrawSocket API. First in their purpose. In the end, uh, they're both designed to draw in real time on the page uh, by sending OSC commands. Oh. Here's how you would write a cursor in InScore. Uh, and here's how you do it in DrawSocket, targeting the violin part. To animate or move a cursor in InScore, you'd first draw a trajectory and then synchronize the cursor to this trajectory uh, at a given tempo. In DrawSocket, animation are handled by the tween library which can be seen as a high performance property setter. The article finishes with a brief description of the use of DrawSocket in the concert, which you'll hear tonight, 7 p.m. So this combines two technology, DrawSocket, as we said, and JackTrip for low latency audio, thanks to the work of uh, Jakob Sello, who managed to get it up and running with uh, 16 remote singers since the first rehearsal. Um, I hope uh, this is not a spoiler for tonight, but I'll, I'll give a few examples. The program opens with Justin Young. Um, I think the rhythmic possibilities will be self-explanatory. Um, Don't hold so back if I see it. This is 
Han är då. piece which I've talked about this morning. Passage is reminiscent of Bolin Pears a little. You hear three quarter tones. <laughs> then uh, Palestrina. Um, this raised many interesting questions about um, um, well, freedom control interpretation, the idea of a conductor being essentially a human metronome. Uh, we've had similar uh, questions with uh, Sandy Bhagwati's piece, uh, interestingly also based on the idea of having four people breathe together at the same time. In short, the answer is no, no need of a bouncing ball, um, but you notice they still don't quite start together because of the video lag. However, please notice how musical and in tune this is. Richard Hoadley composed his piece in Inkscore, uh, sending messages via Super Collider. <laughs> Anders Lin, uh, the interesting thing about Anders' piece is that he's uh, remote controlling the score in real time. So he's uh, DJing the score, so to speak, and thus uh, takes full advantage of the real time capacities of, of um, draw sockets. 
Sorry, the, um, the editing of the video wasn't great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jonathan, um, for this interesting uh, presentation and the introductory introduction of uh, tonight's concert. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, we have uh, three more minutes left. Um, so if you have, if someone has some questions, please ask them now. Jonathan, hi, Slavko here. Um, great presentation. The first one was great as well. Um, so I was just wondering when you were comparing these different technologies, uh, have you done any testing in parallel, kind of more load testing, system testing? Do you have any experiences with how they behave? Um, first of all, um, you, in, in my paper, there's your uh, Z-score and uh, Comprovazado, which um, I thought they should fit in the, t the table, but they're not in, in strictly browser-based, and that's why I was... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then um, yeah, we're testing between those. Uh, um, yeah, well, I've been yeah, sort of testing a bit of all of um, them. I think my position is here not being really a developer, so I'm more of a tester of yeah. the overall thing. <laughs> yeah, sure. Any more questions? <clears throat> All right, and we can actually start a little earlier with uh, uh, Slavko Zagorac and uh, Michael Shubishinsky's uh, paper. Um, uh, Michael, please correct my pronunciation. I'm still just struggling with your name, although we've known each other for a long, long time. So are you, are you around? I think Michael is around, but I will be presenting. So uh, let me just try to share. Okay. I am unable to share until another participant is sharing. Okay, can you try now? Right, okay. And should just to name the title also very quick, Networked Compro Comprovisation Strategies with Z-Score. So Slavko, please go ahead. Z score, Z score, <laughs> depending where you are. Um, okay, so uh, yes, uh, my name is Slavko Zagorak. I'm doing a, a part-time PhD at Goldsmiths uh, University of London with uh, Roger Redgate and uh, Michael Zbyszynski, with whom I uh, co-authored this, uh, this paper. Uh, PhD is in uh, music composition, although I probably preferred term now music developer for what I'm really doing. Uh, my main interest is uh, utilization of networking technology in music composition and performance. So today uh, I'll be talking a little bit about improvisation and how networking technology uh, can be used to augment the practice. And in the second part, I'll be more talking about Z-score, which is the uh, notation uh, system that I'm using in my research. So yeah, we've been talking about uh, this for the last couple of days. Uh, yeah, traditionally, composition and improvisation uh, sometimes are regarded as uh, polar opposites of music making, where on one side we have this composer who creates a score, which is supposed to have all necessary information for uh, realization of a piece of music. 
And on the other side, we have improvisers, free improvisers who spontaneously uh, create music, uh, seemingly where all the decisions are uh, contingent or subject to chance. It has been argued successfully, I would say, that none of these idealized polar opposites actually exist, so that all music making sits somewhere on a spectrum between fully composed and purely improvised. So um, another way of looking at this spectrum is to observe music as, a, as an outcome of a decision-making process. So on one side, we have a composer who makes all these decisions in isolation before the performance and captures them in a, in a form of a static score. And on the other side, we have uh, a bunch of free improvisers who uh, make continually decisions in, in real time, dynamically assessing the output of, of all, uh, of all uh, participants, uh, where performance becomes a self-regulating decision loop. I am particularly interested in this middle ground where this black dial on the screen is, uh, and networking technology is really good enabler for moving this dial left or right as desired. Simplified, uh, simplified the representation of the network performance system. Uh, so we have here different participant types connecting, uh, such as the composer, performance, conductor, audience, and different digital engines connect, connecting into the system and exchanging data and events in real time. So all participant types can both consume and produce events. And in the middle, we have this logic which decides who can see what and when. Uh, as well as who can create events, what events, and at what time. This logic can be uh, encapsulated and hosted on a server in a traditional client-server configuration, or it can be split into uh, multiple locations in a more distributed net, uh, system architecture. So as we've been, as we've seen, uh, nature of score has been questioned what what is score in this uh, environment uh, it becomes kind of uh, an interface that participants communicate between each other and with the system so the score is not anymore just a static notation because now we have to model all these different dynamic behaviors and both dynamic, dynamic notation and event handling uh, become contingent elements of the performance Different participant types require different score representations, um, and also they can connect up with different hardware, hardware and software. So system needs to be able to integrate with all these different APIs, network transports, etc. Uh, participants can be given multiple agency, so audience can have a score representation on their on their mobile devices. Uh, they can also have interactive elements, so they can submit events into the system as well that their uh, as well as their uh, devices can be used for uh, sound production so this all blurs these traditional boundaries between performer uh, audience co composer etc so uh, challenges are numerous uh, and uh, i just listed a few of them uh, here i would probably emphasize uh, the complexity of the composition process uh, in this case, due to the lack of easy to use tools, there's quite a high barrier to entry for non-technical composers. But as we've heard in the last couple of days, there's a lot of work going on in this, uh, in this field. So hopefully we'll have much better tools soon. Right, so Z-score um, I presented a few years ago um, is the, um, Notation system for mixed ensemble composition and performance. It consists of um, multiple components, some proprietary, some third party. For music notation, I'm using uh, Adobe Illustrator and JavaScript plugins, the scheduling and distribution engine, and uh, control, performance control GUI is uh, proprietary Java implementation. Musicians use InScore. Uh, actually, any OSC enabled engine can be plugged into the system, and audience connects uh, with any browser. So I'm using this uh, alternating pain notation strategy for uh, 
uh, for musicians, uh, where there's always one active pane uh, from which musicians play and one uh, uh, preparatory pane which gets updated with upcoming notation in a predefined time window. Uh, the, this layout has been determined through user trials. Uh, the aim was to make the layout as familiar as possible to classically trained musicians to ease the transition to these digital dynamics scores. Any actions that musicians can take are displayed below the, uh, below the notation. For dynamic uh, performance uh, parameter notation, I split uh, all the parameters that need to be dynamically notated in uh, separate two-dimensional spaces. So uh, here, uh, uh, okay, so, so these two-dimensional spaces, x-axis is uh, time and y-axis is the uh, range of the particular parameter. Here we see example for string instruments uh, where left and uh, right hand notation is separated vertically. And for example, the bow position, speed and pressure uh, have their own separate uh, spaces. So why is this done this way? Because it allows me to put these um, dynamic overlays on top of the static notation and the um, current value of the dynamic parameter is displayed as a line and color for easy understanding. Uh, that can be controlled from the performance uh, control GUI in real time. This will be much more obvious. I'll try to demo all this uh, hopefully at the end. This is the performance control GUI. Uh, I'll go through it hopefully in more detail later on. Uh, Zetsco has multiple uh, um, the randomization strategies. Uh, this particular one uh, decides what instrumentation and what notation is going to be used in the next time window. I uh, will hopefully talk about it later on as well. Uh, the scripts can be embedded directly into the score uh, and they can have timing and destination assigned. So the destination can be server side or any client, so web client or any OSC engine like Max in score, et cetera. Audience can, can connect uh, with, uh, with uh, web browsers. Uh, the implementation is standard HTML JavaScript mixture. There's a number of different JavaScript libraries, uh, proprietary libraries, as well as third party like GSUB for anim animation, web audio, web, uh, web speech for audio, et cetera. Uh, clients connect either via WebSockets or SSC, which I haven't seen mentioned before. It's very, it's very useful uh, protocol. Uh, if nothing works, uh, it, everything falls back to good old HTTP client falling. Uh, this is just a max uh, in, uh, implementation. It's basically uh, just a Java external with JSUI component, which receives uh, the uh, OSC uh, commands and uh, then distributes them to named uh, max objects in a kind of normal way. All right, let me try to to show you how this all works. Um, right. So uh, this is the Adobe Illustrator, uh, the, uh, the score for score authoring. Uh, you can see here the uh, this is string quartet. Um, so the notation can be mixed, uh, symbolic and graphical, and you see the separation of dynamic parameters. And there's also the uh, scripting directly embedded into the score. Uh, so this is the um, just a JavaScript plugin, which uh, allows me to manage the score uh, a bit better, create bars and pages and manage all that and export score into the, uh, the distribution engine. So these are various front ends used for in score is basically just the representations of score. So this is the performance control uh, GUI, uh, Java FX. This is in score, uh, which contain all the notation, max containing all different components as required for the score. And this is just a standard uh, web browser that audience can connect with. So I can load the score and, uh, and you can see if I start a score, all different components react in real time. So 
Um, this is obviously running on, on, on one machine at the moment uh, and, and during performances, clients will be connected through the network. So here you see this uh, alternating pane notation where, for example, the top pane is updated while the bottom pane is played. There's this bouncing ball indicating current position, which musicians actually find quite useful. Um, uh, the uh, the max is just uh, I show you this is just a kind of external and a JSUI component uh, delivering uh, messages to different components. This is the audience front end, and I can con send different messages. For for example, uh, for the dynamics, if I want to change music dynamics in real time, I can overlay it, and you'll see kind of this line and color indicating the desired dynamics. I can submit combination, different combinations of overlays, change uh, bow pressure or uh, bow position, uh, speed, etc. Um, I can also, uh, I can change tempo, slow it down. Um, I can also send messages directly to uh, browsers so well, I say tender <laughs> so there you are this is displayed on the on the on the on the browser so that's me sending messages to different clients I can also go to part of a composition where uh, various clients can in, uh, interact with the system so so here we have a audience view is splintered to these tiles which are mapped to page of music uh, so basically uh, the tile with most clicks uh, is played in the next time window I is sent to me. okay I won't be, okay so uh, and uh, musicians uh, can decide whether they want to participate as a cellist. Uh, I can decide whether to participate in the next time window uh, or not. So it's just an example of a kind of participation. Um, I think yeah, that's that's what I wanted to demo today. I'm not going to go into much more detail uh, for the implementation. Let me go back to. Okay, future work, uh, lots of stuff to do. I would love to integrate stuff with the draw sockets and uh, other other things uh, eventually. Um, yeah, so that's about it, I think. Um, I think I probably ran out of time already. Uh, thank you, uh, Slavko, for your uh, wonderful, uh, impressive work. Uh, We've met a few years ago, and I was you were telling me about Z-score, and it's it's amazing how far this has already uh, developed. Um, um, I have uh, one question before I I, I uh, before I hand <coughs> the Q and A session over to the general audience. Um, <clears throat> but let me just um, um, uh, ask one quick question, which is, um, uh, what about the title? Ligeti test. That sounded interesting. So what 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 does this have to do with Ligeti? <laughs> Sorry, this was just <laughs> it's a uh, it's it was made for Ligeti string quartet, uh, which is based here in London. So we did a few trials. So uh, it's, it's I should have named it. <laughs> I knew somebody is going to not notice that. It's just basically Ligeti string quartet test. It's a sync quartet, but with the extra parameters like the bow pressure. It's a it's a sixth test we've done. <laughs> it's, is it is it that uh, uh, who indicated the bow pressures and everything? All these uh, extra parameters. With, with the, did you you know get feedback from the performers or uh, is this yes something? yes so uh, they they found uh, they found it's. Uh, I think re relatively uh, easy to understand. Uh, I think these uh, dynamic layers just overwrite the static notation. So once they get used to static notation, I think uh, 
they 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 can perceive dynamic changes relatively easily. So they, they were. So what I noticed during the trials is that musicians con concentrate on pitch information first. So as they get familiar with pitch information, then they expand their view and then start observing first dynamics and then all these other parameters such as the ball pressure yeah. and speed. So they kind of slowly grow the scope out uh, and then start to uh, react to different changes. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, so someone just wrote in the chat window, I like the jumping red point very much in Inscore view. <laughs> the, the famous bouncing ball. <laughs> okay, I can see Rama has got a question. Rama? Uh, Yes, yes. Uh, Slatko, uh, congratulations. That was all really cool stuff. Um, very exciting to see that. Um, I was curious. Um, I've also done a lot of work in Illustrator, as you know, and I'm, I'm curious about... So uh, recently, all of my scripts stopped working from Illustrator that for, from like a few versions yeah. ago, I think. Yeah. And I was wondering if you had any... If you had to like rewrite your scripts what? Or what, actually, what happened with that? I think I'm still using, it stopped working, I think, in version 25, I think. I'm still using 24, I think. So I'm not updating basically ever again. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I mean, I'm I'm like, part of me is always, like a lot of the stuff that I'm doing, I'm always like, ah, oh, it would be so cool to just do it in Illustrator. But then they, they always are breaking things. And, yeah, and yeah. Uh, so I just was wondering if, if that is still the case, that it's still yes. not worth the effort or do you think it is worth the effort to... i haven't tried the latest version i need to try the latest version they might have fixed it there was also the http uh, server uh, actually there was they, they had some http uh, protocol implementation as well which i wanted to explore as a kind of dynamic uh, notation tool but uh, it, it never I, I, that all stopped working i think and, and sorry i have one more very quick question um Oh, I see. Cats are still working. That's cool. Um, I don't know what I did wrong, but uh, what was I going to say? Oh, can you draw to the Illustrator canvas from JavaScript? Because you used to be able to, I think, but then something, I don't know. Is that possible for you? Um, I, ha I, haven't, I haven't tried that yet, okay. but I think it should be possible. I think there are there is API that allows for, uh, for commands to be sent to it, yes. Michael, Michael notes that Adrian is now at Adobe. I think he's in the Premiere side, though, but that's a good point. Anyway, thanks again. I'll, I'll get off. I'll pass the mic. This sounds like a question you could, you could probably ask uh, tonight in the, uh, during the open house, or maybe you can find uh, a minute to uh, discuss these issues uh, in, a, in a separate room, but we have to move on. And, and Gil has raised his hand. Gil? Okay, I see a raised hand, but no one's talking. Okay, so then who else? Is anyone else? Okay, I'm just gonna look at the, the other screen. Okay, so it seems like uh, Gil would have been the, the only other person but he seems to have been maybe have stepped out. Okay, so then we're going to, um, I think I stopped. Okay, great. Oh, good. Now, can you hear me now? Or his hand, so great, wonderful. Okay, so the next presentation will be right. Anderson. Uh, the uh, paper is called Indra, a virtual score platform for network music performance. So please, Welcome, Drake Anderson. Thank you. Thanks, let me uh, just connect here. My apologies, I've got too many windows open, but hi everyone. <laughs> okay, is that reasonably visible?
Okay, great. Well, uh, I hope everyone can hear me. Hi, my name is Drake Anderson. Uh, I teach electronic music at Vassar College in the United States. Um, so good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are. Um, this is my first tenor. I'm happy to be presenting. I'm grateful for the opportunity. And um, thank you for the introduction. Yeah, I'm, I'm here to talk about this virtual score software platform called Indra. Um, and uh, let me get going. So uh, it, it is available at, at uh, creativeinteraction.org if you'd like to check it out, um, download it. Um, it essentially, it's a, a tool for live networked musical performance um, that allows a conductor to improvise with an ensemble by transforming the notation that appears on musicians' screens in real time, or perhaps better, near real time. Uh, it's a platform, not a composition, meaning that it can be used to perform many different compositions, including pre-existing ones, um, which I'll get to later on. It's, its use is designed to be deeply interactive in that the composer creates a collection of clips, as it's called, but which is then transformed dramatically through the conductor's intervention in performance. Composers can conduct their own works, but the most interesting kind of interaction, I think, is the exchange that can occur when a conductor is interpreting work that they have uh, that they have not created themselves. And so there, there ends up being this process of trying to find a path through a piece that is to some extent unfamiliar and, and coming up with your own interpretation of it. Uh, so this very simple chart uh, just gives it a really rough overview of the process of creating a new work for Indra. So you can see at the top, the composer will create a collection of clips to be performed using Indra um, and sends this to the conductor. So by collection, I just mean essentially a, a database of fragments of notation, which I describe as uh, clips. Each clip is then tagged with metadata um, that describes its qualities. And that's, uh, that can be music theoretical parameters, that can be uh, you know, emotional effective qualities and so on and so forth. Um, then the conductor and the performers load the collection into their interfaces. And during the performance or the rehearsal, the conductor is continuously selecting for certain qualities, essentially filtering for certain qualities. And clips meeting the specific criteria that the conductor lays out are randomly cycled independently um, on the performer's interfaces. Uh, so a quick look at the specifications. It's developed in Max. It uses um, the Bach cage and data packages for the programmatic notation, though it also supports images. Um, so you can get graphic elements um, and other kinds of specific notational features that aren't supported by Bach yet. Um, it, it works over a local area network sending UDP via OT. Um, and uses the zero configuration networking package. There are three distinct patches, each with their separate functions for the different roles in the performance, and compositions are stored as the bach.llll files um, with a, a folder of supplementary image files as necessary for each collection. Uh, so now I'll go through each of the different interfaces I have kind of a screen capture video of each interface that I'll play in the background as I describe what's what's happening. So let me um, get to that. Uh, so just to give a, before I jump into that, just a couple more um, details about each patch, right? The composer patch, um, the, the process of creating a collection takes place before the performance. Um, so it provides this environment in which the composer can create, edit clips, um, import clips from music XML, um, parse incoming files, and then tag with, with metadata and the different kinds of tags that are available, which I'll speak about in a moment. Um, the conductor's patch then is, is a, a real-time aspect. So the, once the collection is loaded in, then the conductor connects to the network, connects to the performers, and they will be um, filtering for different kind of metadata qualities and sending those updated filter values continuously to the performers. Um, 
And then the performers patch is designed to be uh, above all legible and simple to use um, since performers do not always have the, the same investment in the technical aspect as the conductor. Um, so it's intended to be really straightforward to require very little intervention um, and includes a practice mode so that the performers can cycle through all the possible clips in the collection uh, prior to the first rehearsal or the first performance. So this is the composer patch. Uh, and you can see here uh, it has a dynamic interface where the top half um, well, the top half is relatively static that shows um, the Bach.score object and different kind of administrator level controls. And then on the bottom half, you have all the different metadata parameters that can be assigned and saved. So here I'm just using the, the uh, click, you know, the mouse clicking interface with the, the Bach.score object to generate very quickly um, a, a one bar passage then we can use uh, the various Bach and Cage and Data objects to automatically generate the metadata. So you'll see that once that process has taken place, um, now all these values are populated. It finds the key, you know, can, can list the notes, um, you know, anything that a conductor in performance might like to, uh, might like to search by. Uh, just going through a couple of other features here. Oh, whoops. Add here. Um, and then you can also see the tagging functionality, the instrument tags, which are similar to the regular tags, but function invisibly so that gestures intended for one instrument, like a flute or a cello, will only go to the flute or the cello in that particular context. And then finally, it supports all of the scripting messages that would go to a Bach.score or Bach.rule object. So here we can just add some accents, for example. Uh, so next is the, the conductor's patch. So here the conductor is loading in uh, the collection that the composer has already made. And then again, there's this kind of dynamic interface, but a little bit larger because this is intended for real-time use. So the, the uh, controls, uh, the filter controls at the bottom are a little bit simpler. So in this case, we're sending um, filter messages to the trombone, the vibraphone, and the oboe, corresponding to any clips that have in this collection that have a pitch center of D or A using this, this pitch center filter. And so if we scroll through, we can see exactly which clips in the collection correspond to those filter settings. Um, those clips meeting the criteria will then cycle automatically on the performer's end. They cycle independently. Um, so the filter values are updated. And then on the performer's end, they will see uh, whatever clips are, are randomly pop up in, in whatever order. Um, you can also see the tagging interface uh, over on the right. And then some of the other options, you can uh, group the instruments into custom groupings. Those groupings can be saved as a separate settings file that the conductor uses if they'd like to, for example, perform uh, with the same ensemble but perform multiple collections. That same settings file will persist for the conductor um, independent of whatever collection they use. Then you can also see uh, the dynamics tab, the mode tab, and the, the instant messaging tab. Uh, so then the third patch is the performer's patch. So here uh, is the performer getting ready to enter practice mode. So they load a collection, and this is the basic interface. Again, pretty stripped down and simple where the notation is up at the top. And then just like in Z-score, there's a little preview of the next clip to show up. Uh, you can see that there's a timer in the upper right as well as a skip clip button in case something unplayable or unexpected shows up. Um, instant messaging capacity with the conductor and then in the lower right some administrative controls including a reference pitch for uh, vocalists, uh, the ability to change the clef that one's using and then in the display at the top alternating between programmatic notation through Bach.score and um, some images that are also included as part of the collection. Uh, 
Uh, so rather than rehash exactly what's in the paper, I wanted to focus on a few specific aesthetic goals for Indra that distinguish it from other platforms and then how uh, those have been implemented in order to, again, emphasize what makes Indra unique in this space. Uh, I should say, starting off, that Indra began life um, a number of years ago as a way of implementing Earl Brown's open form system digitally, but working with potentially a much, most of his compositions have, you know, between maybe 20 and 30 different events. So the idea was that, well, what if we had, you know, 100 events or 1,000 events? Um, it wouldn't be practical to, for the conductor to be selecting these these individual events from such a large group, but if you could select by different kinds of parameters, that would be a powerful way of being able to improvise with an ensemble in real time. And so it's kind of expanded from there to encompass aspects of Brown's aesthetics, um, Anthony Braxton's aesthetics in terms of allowing for jumping off points for free improvisation with the ensemble, um, and then John Zorn and Walter Thompson or other folks um, whose different metal language systems have, have influenced uh, the, the development. The first composition for the Indra platform was from 2014. It was a chamber concerto for viola and unspecified ensemble called Spring Flow. And the concept here was that the viola soloist would play a completely written out solo uh, from beginning to end and would be accompanied by essentially the same material but presented non-linearly. So I took that solo, wrote that first, chopped it up into many small fragments um, and then transcribed it for each of the different instruments in the ensemble and then the conductor can essentially improvise the accompaniment to the violist um, using the same material so that was one of the, the earliest aesthetic impulses and and then again to kind of developing from there so to get to some of these broader goals uh, with the platform one uh, one thing that I think really distinguishes Indra from other platforms is that synchronization is not necessarily um, the goal. So while many uh, current platforms, many of the platforms already discussed in this, uh, in this conference emphasize or specifically facilitate the synchronization of notation over a network or over the internet, um, Indra operates just behind real time. Uh, so this, this manifests in a few different ways, right? The first and, and most obvious is that the conductor is making filter changes um, that are independent of the progression of clips that the performers see. So the, the performer may be in the middle of playing a clip, a filter change happens, and then it won't be until the next clip loads that a clip reflecting the new filter values will be pulled up. Um, uh, it, it, rather in the opposite direction, conductors can also schedule dynamic trajectories in advance, but otherwise there's not a whole lot of uh, scheduling uh, capacity. And that's, that's primarily by design that it's intended to be for real-time improvisation. Would be interesting to implement more scheduling, but, but the, the real-time aspect is kind of what, what I've been stressing so far. So it's, um, it's not a, a huge development priority at the moment. Um, other features in, in support of this idea um, is the, again, the, the next clip warning in the lower left of the interface that you saw similar with Z-score. Um, it, it was interesting what Slavko was saying um, because I, I also had initially made it completely real time and that there was no preview of the next clip, but then through work with performers, that was a feature that I added because it made them um, so much more comfortable with it because there is this, this kind of aspect of sight reading. Um, and then finally, there's also the use of functional metadata. So all the metadata is customizable, but some of the default properties are, are functional, meaning that they are responsible for how long a given clip will appear on screen um, through a kind of decision tree that, that Indra considers. Uh, so the next aesthetic goal is ease of use for all, which doesn't necessarily sound like an aesthetic goal, but in, in a world where complexity can be an aesthetic, I think simplicity can also be an aesthetic consideration. Um, this primarily manifests as um, clarity of design, 
uh, consistent operational design logic and also a number of time-saving functionalities. Um, one that, that was, has been a huge boon for this particular implementation has been the use of the zero configuration networking protocol. It makes it much easier for performers to join the network. Before I had this system where they had to find their IP address and all this stuff, um, and it was really a pain for them. Um, and now being able to announce themselves just by giving their name and their instrument to the conductor um, really makes things a lot simpler. Um, UDP works pretty well uh, for, for my purposes. Again, you know, it, it's mostly autonomous once it's up and running. Uh, the automated, <coughs> excuse me, the automated metadata um, also saves the composer time, as does the batch tagging and importing. Um, and then the use of data.cartesian for the conductor to be able to uh, visualize the entire collection is really helpful as well. And then finally, um, a flexibility of material that's again supported by the metadata and the tagging systems, uh, the custom metadata formats that includes uh, not only custom, the ability to create custom metadata, but also custom data formats. Um, and uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's about it. So, I mean, ultimately it's designed for musicians who are interested in integrating improvisatory and notation-based approaches, which sounds a little bit paradoxical, um, but I think the virtual score format is a unique opportunity to engage with that point of intersection. So thank you very much and uh, happy to take any questions. Okay, thank you, Drake, uh, for this uh, interesting presentation and for presenting an, uh, an alternative to uh, some of the um, systems that we've been seeing here. Um, yes, any questions? So let me just uh, change my view so I can see you all. Maybe you can stop sharing your screen. Thank you. Um, any questions so far? No one so far. Rama, can I count on you? Uh, sure. Um, yeah, and so uh, I think you. I was having a question about the 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 live the the sort of experience of performing with it, but you kind of got to that uh, towards the end. I could uh, piece it together. Um, uh, I'm not sure what. I'm not sure if I have a fully formed question though. Okay. Garrick, Garrick, do you have a question? Well, I have a question. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I just, uh, I just was so much reminded of my the of my own system, Quintet.net, mm -hmm. which I uh, started uh, in, devised in in, in 1999, and which also had this kind of the the composer and the had the, the client, the listener component, and had the conductor component and the server component, and like these 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 components, like it, I, it kind of reminded me of my own work. This is what I. It's it's not a question really. It's just a statement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not sure whether you're aware of that. That's that's a question. Yes, yes, no. Quintet.net is a big inspiration, of course. Okay, thank you. I, I guess I, I, um, I don't know if it's a question, but I was really st struck by the um, method that you have for sorting by certain tags. I thought that was pretty innovative. Um, the sort of, uh, yeah, semantic sorting um, approach, which I, th I thought was really smart. Um, and I could see that being applicable in a lot of different um, real-time improvisation uh, contexts. Cool. Yeah, that, that's my hope. Yeah, that and, and you've got and and or logic that you can use, um, and you know it, it's totally open-ended, so you can have it uh, reflect musical qualities or emotional effective qualities or theme groups or light motifs or however you want to organize a piece. I could see I could see it being maybe, I mean, you know, to go through all the menus takes a little bit of time, right? So I could imagine that um, the, the, the leader of the, or the person who is doing the sorting might want to um, make some pre, 
pre-performance plan potentially of which parameters they want to sort by? Um, yeah. is, there, is there a kind of preset system that you could, is it, does that exist so you can like pre-save your, your sorting decision oh, and then yeah. quickly just say, you know, A, B, but it's already, that sorts by right. like 10 different parameters or something. Right, right. Um, I, yeah, that's not implemented, but that's a great idea. Yeah, that, that would be super helpful. One, one thing that definitely helps with the planning is the data.cartesian object, which is just so incredible for, for being able to look at a big data set and, and to filter by up to five parameters simultaneously or to visualize by five parameters simultaneously. Have, uh, there's also, I don't know if you've looked at it, but in the Mubu, there's the, um, I think it's the k-means object, yeah. which, which is, uh, I think, has no limitation on the number of dimensions that you're searching by. So maybe you might be interested in that. Also, SPAT has one as well, I think. Yeah, that, that would be great. Yeah, thank you. Well, and then of course the there's the JavaScript SQLite object for in, in Max, which you can also use is very powerful, um, also highly recommendable. Um, anyway, so I think we're coming to a closing now. It was also a, a very nice session, uh, and I'm uh, grateful for uh, all this inspiration.